Hello everybody, what's up? It's your girl Merle and I'm back with another Gordon Ramsay recipe. I don't know why I said it like that. This one has been around for a while. It's been referred to as his famous cauliflower steak recipe. I know people have tried it. I want to try it because people keep sending me the recipe and I feel like I just got to do it already. So you know how it goes. I looked at his recipe. I followed it to the very best of my ability. I had to swap a couple things here and there. I'll explain later. And we're gonna try it and see if it's really good, you know? I mean, what else is there to do? So without further ado, let's pop right into the video. As per usual, Gordon likes to put you to work. <laughs> this recipe has a lot of moving parts. I get it. Fine dining takes time, Ming. We're gonna commit to it, but it's gonna be a ride. So I had to film this in a way where I walk us through the recipe and then I filmed all of the footage on my stove for technical reasons. And so that's why it might feel a little different than other videos. Hopefully it's still okay with you guys. I just wanted to make sure I got the best possible shots of this as I could, so that's why. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is make his olive piston. Piston? Pisto? One of those is maybe close to correct. I don't like olives, okay? So I'm subbing in capers for olives because they're related. But if you want to do it his way and go the olive route, go for it. You know what I mean? I'm going to link his recipe in the description below. We're going to mix together our capers or olives if you're using olives, olive oil, orange juice, orange zest, lemon juice, lemon zest, and parsley. And then season to taste with salt and pepper. And then we're going to mix, mix, mix that up and set it aside. All right, so we have the olive pisto all set and ready to go. That rhymes. And now it's time to make the porcini mushroom mixture, except I couldn't find porcini mushrooms fresh. So I'm using shiitake mushrooms. Another little sub in for me. And you know what? If you can find porcinis, great, do it. Uh, I couldn't, so here we are. I think it'll be fine. I love shiitake mushrooms, so it won't affect my review of the recipe. So get your pan nice and hot around a medium high heat, add two tablespoons of olive oil, and then we're gonna get our mushrooms in there and zest them up. You know, a little sizzle, crackle pop. <laughs> Probably shouldn't do that actually. But be careful of the hot oil, okay? There's a lot of oil in this recipe and a lot of it is hot. And you all know I don't like working with hot oil, so be careful. So you're gonna let them cook for about three to five minutes. And then we're gonna add our shallots. Well, for being honest, I used an onion because the two shallots that I got were moldy when I cut into them. So we're using an onion, arguably too much of an onion. It's all good. And we're gonna add in some garlic as well. Yes, I have my garlic in a shot glass. It's a vibe. We're gonna let all of that cook together for about five minutes. And then we're gonna add our olive caper. Pisto. And stir that all together so it's nice and incorporated and we're gonna sprinkle some mint in there as well. Stir that right up as well. So it's all mingling. We're getting there. Now it's time for us to work with our damn cauliflower. <laughs> so many steps. So now it's time to work with the cauliflower. It's a lot of dishes too. You know what I mean? It's a lot of oil. It's gonna be a lot of cleanup. Anyway, time to work with our cauliflower. So we're using two medium heads of cauliflower. My camera crapped out at this moment, so you can't see me cutting them. But essentially what you wanna do is cut one to two inches off either end of the cauliflower so you have like a middle plank. And then slice that in half. I even sliced one of them into thirds because one was a bit bigger than the other one. If they seem a little too thick, you can always split them up, but just be careful. You wanna keep the stem at least a little bit intact because otherwise it's all gonna fall apart and all that jazz. And all that jazz! You know I couldn't let that go. So go ahead and preheat your oven to 325 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 162 degrees Celsius. Probably just do 160 degrees. Then you wanna drizzle your baking sheet with eight tablespoons of olive oil. And you're gonna sprinkle in some harissa powder and two pinches of salt. Then what Gordon did is he like mixed it in there. Like he like rubs it in the mixture. Moving forward, what I would recommend doing is just putting the olive oil, harissa, and salt in like a Pyrex and mixing it together and just brushing the cauliflower with it. Personally, it's just what I would do. Because it doesn't get into all the crevices and you want it all lubed up, you know? Then you're gonna heat up your pan with a medium high heat until it starts smoking. 
add some olive oil in, and then you're gonna place your cauliflower steak in there and let it sizzle in there until the edges get nice and charred-like for about 90 seconds. So do both sides and make sure to be careful because they will break apart. And you're gonna add some butter in there and then we're gonna add some veggie stock in there. And you wanna kinda baste your cauliflower and also be careful of the hot oil because she was popping. Then what you wanna do once your cauliflower is looking nice and charred is go ahead and put it right there on the middle rack of your oven and let that cook for about eight to 10 minutes depending on the thickness of the cauliflower steak. Then when we're done, we're gonna drizzle our olive pito mushroom concoction over the top of our roasted cauliflower and voila, she looks pretty. You gotta admit that, she looks good. Okay, so Gordon, you really made me work for this one. You really made me work. I mean, look at my kitchen. I couldn't even be bothered to clean it up before I tried this because I'm so hungry because this took so long and so much work. But that said, I'm very excited to try it. It looks great. It looks nice and charbroiled and the mushies look cute. Anyway, I just want to try this. I am ravenous right now, so let's do it. You gotta hand it to Gordy. The man knows how to build a nice flavor profile. That said, I'm not letting him off the hook. This resembles steak in zero ways. Zero ways. I mean, it's charred. That's the only connection I'm seeing. But, you know what? It's really good, like decadent. It's very elevated. I mean, the flavors are so complimentary between the olive pito. I'm really aware that I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but I'm gonna keep going. You know, like this would be nice as a little appetizer for friends when they come over. Granted, you're gonna be working on this appetizer longer than the entree, most likely. Unless it's another Gordon Ramsay recipe, in which case, you're just gonna be busy. Likeness to steak, from zero to steak, it's like a 0. 0.5. It's nothing like steak. Again, the 0. 0.5 comes from the charred, charred edges. But flavor from zero to 10, I would give this a solid seven, 7.5. It's really tasty. I'm probably just gonna stick to roasting my cauliflower and then just adding buffalo sauce to it. Vegan buffalo sauce, don't panic. But this is good. I've liked other Gordon Ramsay recipes better. I liked his tofu bacon better. I might have even liked the eggplant better, which is probably gonna be so confusing. He made an eggplant steak, I tried it. Let me say this, if you're feeling fancy on a nice like summer evening and you wanna make something to wow your guests, do it, but if you're just like wondering like, do I have to try this? I don't think you have to, unless it's really calling your name. Could have come out like hell, I would have finished it after all the work I just did and I'm about to just do. You're doing the dishes, right Gordon? Anyway, thank you so much for sending me this recipe. Send me any other recipes you want. You can DM me directly on Instagram. You could comment them below. Let me know what you want me to try next. And in the meantime, you can check me out on Twitch. I'm streaming about three times a week games, co-working streams, you name it. If you wanna hang out, join my Discord. We can chat there, I'm on there almost every single day. In the meantime, you guys keep being fabulous and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Ciao for now.